All right, welcome back. Uh, today we'll be talking about solving physics equations. And the first part of this, we'll be discussing idealized models and how we use them in physics. So I guess the first thing to sort of notice here is that whenever you go to school or you go into a class to learn about something, um, pretty much everything um, that you learn in class is going to be fake, okay? And what I mean by fake is not that it's not real, but rather that it is going to be simplified, right? When you learn something in class, you learn a simplified version of it. And what we do is we remove sort of extra details that aren't super important, and that is so that we can highlight The important concepts that you're trying to learn. And this is natural. It happens in all classes, it happens in physics, it happens in economics, it happens in, you know, taking a class to learn tennis. Well, they're going to teach you the important concepts first. They're not going to tell you necessarily how to, uh, you know, check the weather to see what the air pressure is going to do to uh, the tennis ball or the tennis racket string tension. All of those are sort of extra details that you kind of don't worry about when you're learning the important concepts. We create idealized models. We simplify it way. Okay, so let's see if we can come up with an example. Uh, let's say you've got a friend, all right, and your friend's name is Andy. All right, now Andy, every day you're, you're going to school with Andy, and every time at lunch he comes to you and he asks to borrow money. He always wants a little bit extra snack. He doesn't have enough money, and so you're a nice person. You always give Andy a little bit of extra change every day. And he never pays you back. And it's adding up. I don't even remember how much money you've given him, but it's a decent chunk of change now. And you've decided enough is enough. So you're going to go visit Andy after school, and you're going to ask for your money back. So you go, you visit Andy, and you discover that Andy is sitting outside in his yard with his, with his little kitten. Okay, and so you go over to Andy, here you are, and you say, where's my money? And, you know, Andy doesn't have the money. He says his promise, he's going to give it to you eventually, he'll get it to you. You've had enough. Okay, it's too late. See, what you do, the only thing that's reasonable is you pick up this kitten and you throw it across the yard. Okay, so here we go. Now we've got a little flying kitten. Okay, kittens flying across the yard, and we want to understand sort of what's happening to the motion of this kitten flying through the air. Well, we can see that it has some kind of velocity inside of the air here. And we also know that there is some weight that's pulling down on the kitten. But, you know, this weight actually doesn't always stay exactly the same because if the kitten gets higher off the ground, it's moving further away from the earth, this weight kind of depends on, uh, on how high it is. As it moves higher away, it gets a little bit, a little bit weaker, this force of gravity. So, you know, you got some, some details there you might have to worry about. And then what else do you have? Well, you got air resistance, right, as it's flying through the air. Uh, maybe the kitten is uh, is meowing, right? And so you got some, some breath 
that's coming out. Maybe as it meows, that breath might, you know, force it backwards depending on its its direction, right? And maybe this this tail is wagging back and forth, right? That might do something. Uh, the air is blowing on the wings, the wing, the the the, uh, the ears. The ears are flapping around. Maybe the cat itself is tumbling through the air as it's trying to land on its little kitten feet. You've got a lot of details here. A lot of things are going on, and the closer you look the more you see. But although that is realistic, it's also confusing, right? There's just, there's too many details. So what do we do? Well, we create an idealized model. What we say is, Let's imagine we get rid of the less important details and we focus what's most important. So let's imagine that instead of this big fluffy cat, the cat is actually a single point-like particle. Okay, now this sounds good. Yeah, we still have this velocity. That's fine. And if all of these forces and motions internally, what's most important? Well, the most important thing is just going to be the weight. And let's just pretend that the weight stays the same because, you know, it's not really going to move that far away from the earth. Air resistance, we'll ignore it. The tumbling motion, the breath, all of that stuff, we'll just ignore it. And what we're left with is a fake cat, but a better way to say this would be an idealized model. And the benefit to doing this is that it is now easy to use. It's easy to imagine what's happening and it's easy to use. Now, we want to make sure that we don't simplify things too much, okay? There is a danger here. In this case, doing this with the kitten, it's probably okay. But, you know, let's say, for example, what happens if instead of a pet kitten, what if it was a pet bird, right? If Andy had a pet bird and you threw that, now suddenly you couldn't just imagine the bird as a simple particle with no air resistance because birds can fly, right? They got wings, they produce lift when they flap, and so you couldn't simplify it this much. Or, you know, let's say it was still, you're throwing this kitten, um, but let's say you're a Superman, right? And you use your super strength to throw uh, the kitten at like Mach 5, right? Through the air, well now suddenly, that at that super hyper speed, yeah, you can't ignore air resistance anymore, right? You're gonna have to take that stuff into account. So there are regions where we can simplify, but you have to be careful you don't oversimplify when you create these idealized models. All right, let's look at another idea here, and that is what we call I see. Now, I see refers to an acronym that we're going to use to try and help us solve physics problems. Okay, so I S E E. What does it stand for? Well, the first word here is going to stand for identify, and then we're going to set up, we're going to eval, oh, going to execute, and then we're going to evaluate. Okay, so here's what the four words stand for. Now, what do I mean? Well, if you're given a problem, the first thing you want to do is identify what you know. These might be things like different variables or different quantities that you're given. And then you also want to know what you need to know. 
sort of what is your goal? What is your target, right? So what do you know and what do you need to know? Identify that first. Now, after that, we're going to set up. What are we gonna set up? Well, we're gonna set up equations in physics. You're gonna have lots of equations and you might also set up a, a little sketch of the situation. Helps you understand what's happening and choose the correct equations to do. So once you've got your equation set up, you're going to execute the math, right? This is the step where you do the math, you execute the math. And then finally, you get an answer, you're going to e evaluate that final answer. And the reason you do that is because you want sort of a sanity check. You wanna make sure that your answer makes sense. You want to catch yourself if maybe you made a mistake somewhere and your answer actually is completely wrong. Here's where you can just sort of look at it and say, does that really make sense? Yes or no, right? All right. Let's see if we can come up with a quick example. All right. So here's the quick example. Uh, we've got uh, Andy owes you $200. That's a lot of lunch money, right? He promises to pay it back to you plus 20% interest as long as you stop throwing his cat. How much money will Andy pay you back? Okay, let's go through the steps. I see, identify. What do we know? What do we need to know? Well, we know that he owes you a total of $200 and that is what we're gonna call the principal that you lent to him, right? And he's going to pay you 20% interest. And what do we need to know? Well, we need to know what is the total amount of money due to you? That's our goal. Okay, so we've identified the stuff. Now let's set up our equation. The equation here is not gonna be too bad. Maybe we can say something like the total amount of money due is equal to the principal plus the principal multiplied by the interest rate, right? I think, uh, yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, next, okay, we finished setting it up. Let's execute the math. Okay, let's execute the math. Let's plug in some numbers here. We've got $200 for the principal, and then we've got here $200 plus, oh, sorry, times 20% to get our total interest. And we punch those numbers into a calculator. And sorry, we're going to get uh, $240 total. That is the total amount of money that is due to us. Great. Okay. Throwing that cat turned out to be a good idea. Now, we executed the math. Let's evaluate the answer to see if it makes sense. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, I mean is, does $240, that make sense? He owes us $200 plus some interest, 240? Yeah, that makes sense, right? We're not expecting to get something like uh, $10,000, right? Imagine we made a mistake somewhere, we accidentally wrote an extra zero or something, and we got an answer of about $10,000. Well, that would not make sense. Likewise, if we only got an answer of, you know, five cents, that also would not make sense. We're expecting to get an answer that is, you know, more than our principal, more than $200, but not much, much more, not double or anything like that. So 240, yeah, that makes sense. So there we go. IC is gonna be a good sort of uh, algorithm to step through as we solve physics problems in the future and we will be using this again and again. Although sometimes we're gonna combine steps if we don't need to explicitly write them all out. And we'll also be using idealized models, especially when we sketch things out or when we try and figure out what are the most important elements in this problem. You wanna idealize, simplify out all of those extra details so you can get to the important concepts. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. You can also give me a like and subscribe if you want to encourage me to continue making more videos just like this. 
Also, make sure to check out my website, which is learning.withgideon.com for more resources, including playlists of all of the videos uh, laid out clearly, as well as image files for all of the slides that we created today. And uh, if you're interested in online one-on-one -on -one tutoring, you can also check the website to see if I'm available for that. Thanks again, and let's keep on learning.